Hello and welcome to the iPad Show Pilot version 2. Not a terribly snappy name, I realise, but perhaps that's where you can help us. First of all, we want to say, uh, Gaz and myself, want to say thank you very much for your uh, support of the first show. We got lots and lots of comments, lots of constructive criticism. Thank you very much. But one of the things that we really do need is uh, a new title. We haven't mm. really got a title for the show, so maybe you could leave some suggestions in the comments below and that will help us out and we can get a snappy and kind of exciting, <laughs> catchy title, if you don't mind. Thank you. Mm. So, Gaz, <laughs> uh, how have you been doing? You've been on tour, right? Uh, away uh, on the road. Yeah, I've been doing a bunch of different things, um, which has been taking me various places. One of the things I've been doing is um, I've been uh, depping for somebody on a on a on a touring dance theatre show, right? Uh, and that involved quite a complicated, uh, numerous cues, musical parts, and uh, I used the iPad. Um, it was very very helpful. I, I created interactive notes which I could just scroll through and we can cut to All it right, here. Okay, so this is just using Pages, the uh, Apple's um, word processor that you can get. Uh, and I could just scroll down through my notes, which is really handy, nice and easily. Uh, but you could also embed like videos, which are like little, little clips. Um. Oh, cool. So I had to like learn uh, the accordion. Um, so on the train, on my way up to the tour, I used this. <laughs> ah, so you actually learned the accordion specifically. That's good. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty good going. Well, uh, one thing I wanted to say as well is uh, I've discovered quite a nifty new application from Yamaha. Well, maybe not so new, but it's new to me anyway, and it's called Setlist. Let me show you. So this is the application interface. Essentially what it allows you to do is set up different sections in a song together with notes. So for instance, here I've got uh, the opening, I've got, you know, it's got obviously, some, this is the demo setup. It's uh, telling me that I want to change patches on my motif and what have you. But as I scroll through the list of available bits, I've got maybe a chorus lyric. And the thing is I can edit these things um, to basically be relevant to what's going on in my set. But the thing that's very cool about this is you can actually assign program changes with via these buttons here and you can set the bank, uh, the MSB, LSB, the channel, uh, you can learn the, the, the program change. You've also got a volume change that you can set here and that can be sent out with each program change. You can link them together so that they would all transmit on one button. So if I go back here and I decide that I want to just press that button, it will transmit those three MIDI program changes and I can have a fourth or a fifth and just scroll through all the different bits and accompanying, uh, accompanying notes and I can bring images in as well. And I must admit, I, when I first saw this, I was thinking, wow, that's actually really cool because it enables you much the same as you're doing, but you could control your MIDI rig mm. or patch changes or, you know, if you had MIDI hardware, it's kind of a pretty cool idea. I was in a band a couple of years ago doing live soundtrack to silent film. Lots and lots to remember, so many cues, loads of loads of patch changing. My word, something like this would have made it, well, a relative breeze. Yeah, and I guess the thing is, again, it's something that the, that the uh, iPad can do without having to be bring the whole laptop. Um, uh, and because you can work with cable MIDI or wireless, then you can access you know, the outside world. And that's something that we were going to talk a little bit about, actually. We've got some hardware that, to check out for an alternative for getting MIDI in and out of your iPad or iPhone. The first way to do this, uh, rather uh, unintuitively, was via Apple's camera connection kit, which essentially added a USB port to your iPad. If I switch to it here, you can see this is a tiny little piece of plastic with a USB connection and an iPad dot. You plug it in. Uh, Gaz has got uh, Alchemy up on the iPad here. If we switch to that, uh, this is the Korg Nano key, uh, so it's old school. And if you'd like to play, Maestro. Class compliant. Class compliant. Needs to be class compliant. Yeah. So just works right out of the box, basically. So the first thing that came along that wasn't the uh, camera connection kit was the Line 6 MIDI mobilizer, which you can still get. Uh, this is a little dongle that hangs off the back of the iPad dock. If I hold it under here, you can see it's like a little dongle and it has mini jacks that end in an in and an out. So you have MIDI in and out. Um, the thing about this though, first of all, this is the version one, which is not Core MIDI compatible. You need to get version two if you're gonna get one of these, because that means it's compatible with all the Core MIDI apps, which really opens it up. So it gives you MIDI IO essentially with everything. Uh, so uh, what have you got then, Gaz? Um, well, the Apple Camera Connection Kit is uh, around 25 UK pounds, um, which is quite a lot for a small piece of plastic. Um, there is an optional 
one you, you can get from, well, I got it from eBay. It's just, uh, just pop it under there. Yeah, it's about well. five pounds. And it's the sort of combined SD card reader. Chunky. And a USB. I'm not sure I'd want that hanging off the bottom of my iPad. No, so I found that was a bit of a problem. So what I did was I got a iOS extender cable. Ah, so you end up with a little bit more, yeah, a bit of distance between A bit of two. distance. Uh, and what's quite nice about this is it's actually latching. It's actually got a, it, it, you have to press oh, both like ends Oh, like the old in. school iPod. That's connector, right, yeah. Right. So it won't come out unless you squeeze both ends. So that kind of good for live, you know, it gives you a little bit more. A bit more confidence. A bit more confidence, yeah. Uh, and then what I've been doing is I've been using a, an Emu X MIDI. Um, right, which is just a class compliant USB MIDI interface, right? Yeah, yeah, which, uh, which I just connect to it and then I can connect it to my synthesizers at home, my MIDI synthesizers. Ah, okay. Yep. There's also the Yamaha IMX1, which is very similar to the uh, Line 6, also core MIDI compliant. It's a little dongle with uh, extended cables with MIDI uh, plugs on the end of them. So that's another alternative. The one thing that I do find that is a bit worrying about all of them uh, so far that we've looked at is they don't have any powering. So it uses up the port and you can't get any power into it. But there is another one which does allow you to power it and that is the IK Multimedia iRig MIDI. And what that does is it allows you to have, well, not only does it give you in, out and through, but it's also got a little USB connection so you can actually continue to power your device, which I think gives it a much more utilitarian use. Certainly live, I'd have a lot more confidence in that. And I guess as well, there is the forthcoming Akai. Uh, oh, the MP, yes, the, the Synth Station 49. Synth Station 49. I am so looking forward to getting my hands on that. That's mm. going to make a really big difference because that's mm. where you slide the iPad into the controller keyboard, it's powered. Yeah, yeah I, uh, I, I've, I don't know when that's coming. The last word I heard was going to be sometime in January. So it's obviously still, still you know, Bit ironing out some of the manufacturing or whatever. I don't know why, but I'm <laughs> looking forward to getting my hands on one. Yeah. So that's our wired options, or at least a number of them uh, looked at. There's also the Wi-Fi connectivity that you could network session with MIDI over Wi-Fi, particularly great when you're trying to connect to a Mac. And one application that uses that extremely well is Gazzy's beloved Thumb Jam. So Gaz, tell us a bit about Thumb Jam. Well, Thumb Jam is a, is a musical instrument. Uh, it's got, it comes with uh, lots of sample sounds, so you can have um, things like cellos, organs, oh, well, the whole gamut of sounds, uh, synth sounds as well. Uh, but uh, as well as its built-in sounds, you can also use its surface as a control surface for controlling soft synths on your computer. Because it has quite an unusual uh, playing surface. In the same that we saw Geosynth, it's not your standard surface. If I switch no. to it here, yeah. excuse me, it only works in uh, portrait mode, which it, is... Yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely designed around the portrait sort of idea, really. Um, I guess because it's thumb jam, so using with two thumbs. Um, what's interesting about it is it displays notes um, in this kind of uh, like vertical stacks. And um, we can change the key by just, uh, we can change the scale. And now the, the range of scales is unbelievable. So it's very interesting if you want to kind of explore. I mean, just look at this list of scales. Wow. Very interesting. Um, and uh, written here is just sort of shortcut. So I can jump to blues scales. I can jump to European scales, Indian scales, um, jazz scales. Uh, so, so you can just, call up a scale and then it means all the notes are mapped to the scale. So it snaps, snaps, yeah. right. But there's like lots of interesting things to do with that. Now let me just put it into, uh, let's just put it into a, a common scale. I'll just go into minor scale for instance. So now I can... Fully polyphonic. Oh, and that's an internal sound, right? Yeah, that's, uh, that's one of the internal sounds. Um, there's a great selection of sounds, actually. We can go to change instruments and we can pan through all these sounds. You, know, you can also make your own. There's a really great multi-sampler built into it as well. <laughs> wow. And uh, the sampler's great because you can, um, it'll, all, it'll map the notes. So all I do is go um, create instrument. And now I've got a little sampler here and I could just sample anything. In this case, I'll use my voice. La. La, la. Okay, like so, and then. La, 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 la. 
It's like the frog chorus. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I mean, you get the idea. It's very easy, it's very quick to do. I could turn on like a low pass filter and then I could map that low pass filter to say X axis. So that's like across the notes here. So now if I oh, was- so you can play a long- So I can filter my samples. Wow, um, okay. Uh, but also that, that was using like an X axis, but I could actually use it using the accelerometer. So, okay. so I can map that on sort of either this way or this way. You know. So it's, it seems like it's a great thing for maybe playing out live and, and oh, capering about on it's stage. It's superb, it's superb. And um, there's a new function introduced in version two, which is fairly mind blowing. And what that is, is pitch to MIDI. It's very easy to do. All we have to do is just press this button here. Ba -ba -ba! And now it's triggering MIDI. Ba -ba -ba, ba -ba -ba. So you, that's real time recorded. That's just from the mic input of the iPad, right? That's that's true. Yeah, it's just from the right mic input. It's doing pitch to MIDI, and once it's in MIDI, you can actually then send the MIDI wirelessly to your door. Wow! Or over cable, I guess. If over you... cable I, I, as well. Yeah, exactly. I should mention that Thumb Jam is operationally almost identical on the iPad as it is on the iPhone, and I've got it on here as well. Right, okay. Uh, they've just sort of put like two layers of the menu just, just to do with the smaller screen. Um, but basically all the functionality of both is the same really. But you can do very cool things. Now, one of the things that uh, version two of Thumb Jam introduces is very comprehensive MIDI support. Sort of, so you can pretty much use it for everything that you could think of MIDI wise, uh, both as using it as a sound module or, or a as a controller right. and the same thing with the phone and look what we can do. Yes, we set something a little bit earlier up, which frankly blew our minds. <laughs> Let me show you now. So I'm on my Mac here and I've created uh, an ad hoc network called iPad Show, which means it's not going via the router, it's just coming out of the airport built into the computer. So now I can, you can see I've got my iPad, I've got Gaz's iPad and Gaz's phone all on the same network and all of those have now joined the, that network. And that means that you can now, can, connect wirelessly between these devices with very low latency. So if you basically are connecting via a router, you get quite high latency between devices, but using an ad hoc network, you get much, much lower latency. So for instance, now I've got these all, these are all connected to the same ad hoc network. I'm playing Gaz, Gaz's iPad here via this uh, rather nifty, another nifty app from Yamaha, which is the keyboard and pads. It gives you access to pads and a kind of arpeggiator. So I'm now playing. Gaz's iPad over the wireless ad hoc network, which gives us low latency. And now you've got something else to add to that mix, right? Yes, I have. I've got my iPhone here, which is also connecting to the same ad hoc network. And I've set it up. I've got Thumb Jam on here, but I'm transmitting MIDI through the ad hoc network that is now being received by my iPad. So if I play notes on here, so the sound is coming out of the iPad, but being triggered from the iPhone. Right, which is kind of, wow, this is pretty, and, and the latency is really good, isn't it? Yes, yeah, fantastic. So if I go to my iPad and I'll just play like a little arpeggio pattern, E. So that's playing Gaz's iPad. So that's cool. But now what's even more cool is Gaz can go into pitch to MIDI and it's much more easy to sort of hold up to his mouth and play. So let's have a go at that. So that's just amazing. I mean, that, do you see what we were doing there? We were playing two sound sources the same sound source from two separate MIDI things. It's incredible. Over Wi-Fi. And I was using some of the functionality in, um, in Thumb Jam, which allows you to actually use the accelerometer. So is that, was that giving it glissando and... Uh, 
giving it like kind of um, like vibrato and using the actual the, the, giving it a that's shake. mind blowing absolutely mind blowing thanks Gaz <laughs> so Thumb Jam uh, just quickly um, how much is it um, the update came out yesterday um, or yesterday when we recorded this which may not be yesterday to you when you uh, see it Thumb Jam I think is five ninety nine. we'll have to check on that I don't know right. actually We'll put the we'll we'll add it to the show notes and you can see it's, how much it is. It's not. Yeah, it, it's it, a bargain. It's a bargain. Oh gosh, it's a bargain. Um, but it also does other things very quickly. Very does... quickly, yeah. Let's jump back to the iPad shot, and we can do wonderful, wonderful recordings very, very quickly. Here we go. I'm going to change instrument. Uh, I'm going to call up uh, my cello pad again, like so. I'm now going to go into recording. Uh, when I record, I press the record button. It won't start recording until I press. Now, as soon as I press it, it'll start recording. Looping. I can change instrument now. So we've got a nice cello playing there. So maybe a viola would be quite nice to go with this here. And I'll just hit the record. And it'll start recording when I want. Vibrato with a finger. See that there? Now this. You can keep on doing this, you can keep adding layers, and, and they don't need to be of the same length, they can be really short layers as well. Uh, and we can go up, we've got our mixer, we can add different amounts of reverb to our different loop layers, we can change the volumes of them as a mixer, we can, uh, we can delete layers as, as we see fit. We can also then export at every layer as an audio file, but also as of version 2, we can export out an accompanying MIDI file for each of those loops as well. You know, and it's brilliant, yeah. It gives you a Wi-Fi address, so you can just, uh, from any computer, uh, yes, you come here, import, export, you can choose, um, sorry, if we come back here, and go to Wi-Fi transfer, it gives you a HTTP address. It's got a web server built in. Web server there, built in, and then you can grab blood. all the files off there. Wonderful piece of software. Right, I don't know about you, but that is, I'm sold. I'm going to have to download it immediately. I'm feeling. I mean, is this going to work okay on iPad One as well as iPad Two? Yes, I believe so. I think it works on on the iPod Touch as well. So it's you know, um, I guess maybe you might start hitting, into, yeah, hitting the problems yeah. when you're layering lots and lots of layers. But it, it seems to work very very well. Uh, and I should just like to say that. One thing that's really, really good and I'd like to draw attention to is this version 2 really fixes so many user requests and um, the, the guy who's programmed it has been very responsive on his uh, forum to use it and he's tried to incorporate everybody's ideas and I'm very impressed by that. I think that's sort of the, the way things should be, you know, very Always good. Always good to see. Mm. Right, so, well, that's it for another week. It's been a roller coaster. I don't even know whether, we, uh, whether we've overrun our 15-minute allocation <laughs> on YouTube. We will find out. But thank you very much for watching. Once again, any comments below, uh, please leave them in the comments, and we will enjoy it immensely. The title! Give yes, us a and title. don't forget, we do need a show <laughs> title. So, um, from Gaz Williams, uh, songsurgeon.co.uk, and from myself, Nick Bat, thank you very much for watching. See you later.